Okay, I'm just playing with filters while I wait for y'all to come on. And I can't find any good ones. I do need coffee. Whatever, we're gonna back. A little technical difficulties. Thank you guys for joining me. Today is the first episode of Bella Vita, my Instagram live series. I'm also planning on turning it into an audio only series. And I have uh, Christina, our yogi today, jumping on with me. Thank you everyone for jumping on. I hope you're all planning on doing yoga with us today. Hi, Hi Christina. <laughs> How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. So good to see you. Huh? It's so good to see you. Oh. So good to see you too. Um, have you figured out how to get your audio onto a speaker or are you just using the phone? I was gonna um use the phone or my AirPods. Oh, earpods would be a great idea. Okay, that's smart. You use that. You're doing all the speaking <laughs> anyway. I'm just trying to make Can you hear me better? Video. Yeah, that's good. Um, Can you hear me okay? okay. I'm not asking yeah. or anything? No. Okay, great. Okay, so guys, uh, this is Christina Saeed. She is a yoga instructor. Um, tell me a little bit more about certification because I don't know a lot about it. What are you certified in? So I do a 200-hour training um, that I did in 2016. So you just do about training with a teacher, and then you do outside training, whether that's like taking classes or taking classes within that studio that you're doing your training at. Um, and I've been certified for five years now. Oh, awesome. You're actually teaching, right? Right, yeah. With a few um, local community classes and as well as some studios and gyms. Great. And then um, I know that through the quarantine, I saw on your Instagram, you're doing um, a donation-based classes online, right? Yeah, so right now I'm doing donation-based, um, which means you can donate zero amount because I know yoga can be really expensive, or if you know you have an amount that <laughs> you would like to offer, I'm always welcome to that, but my classes are free, um, ultimately, and I want to continue to do that for as long as this is going on, really. That is amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I know, so the wind is really loud, and I'm trying to get closer. Yeah. Um, I know when we talked... I ask you to create a simple daily yoga flow because mm -hmm. for me, I am not a yogi. That's what you call yourself, right? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really call myself a yogi either. That's such a strong term, but I guess I could be a yogi. <laughs> okay, you're definitely much more further along that spectrum than I am. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I've always wanted to be the type of person that like wakes up and does a yoga flow or does mm. yoga before bed, but... When it comes to actually exercising, hi, thank you guys for joining. <laughs> when it comes to actually exercising that practice, I get very overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't remember all the moves I'm supposed to put together. Yeah. And so what I wanted is I know during quarantine, um, it's actually a very traumatic psychological experience for everyone. Even if you don't feel justified in saying mm -hmm. that, it is. And so uh, I know a lot of people are struggling with sleep issues, uh, anxiety, stress is kind of at an all-time high, yeah. with cabin fever. So a short flow that we can incorporate into our daily lives, it's simple to remember, like you just write down the basic like trigger words, and then you just know what to do from watching this one time. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I definitely came up with something that's welcoming for all levels and even can be modified simpler. Or even if someone is a yogi, they can make it more challenging for them. So this is going to be something for the whole spectrum of all yogis, <laughs> non-yogis awesome. and yogis. <laughs> Yay. Um, let's see. Why do I have questions? Is that a thing? <laughs> okay, I don't see anything relevant. So um, if you are ready, do you... Well, actually, some of the moves that you incorporated, why did you choose the moves that uh, you incorporated into this particular flow? So I thought about everyone who is working at home, and a lot of that means sitting at the desk, and that could, or just sitting down and being more stagnant. Some of us are a little bit more fortunate, and we can move around. Um, but uh, this is going to be set up for that, really trying to open up the hips, open up the shoulders. And when we start to relieve those tension spots, we can feel lighter in our body and lighter in our minds. And I think that is going to be really helpful for a lot of us out there. 
And so this is something that we could do first thing in the morning or mm -hmm. like if you have a break, take a break sitting at your yeah. desk, incorporate it into a little like bathroom break uh, and then at night before bed as well, right? Oh yeah, I've been like doing this like in between, like on your way or like when you're cooking, I'm like doing a little bit of this. So this is gonna be for any moment of your day. Great, and I know that I talk a lot about staying active and mm -hmm. a lot of times people are dealing with things in their bodies where they're not able to do something like plyometrics and jump squats and running and stuff like that, especially if you have bad joints or you have an injury. So this mm -hmm. is a way to get active with your body and really tune into how you feel, right? Right, right. And if you do have injuries and your that injury starts to speak through you, to you throughout the practice, I say you know, maybe holding off on that posture um, just to prevent the injury maybe from getting worse. But this is going to be great for all levels. Right, and it's totally okay to not go as deep into a move. And it's totally right. okay to just – pause halfway through a move if you mm -hmm. can't hold it anymore right mm -hmm. right and, and recognizing that your body and my body are going to be completely different and we've gone through different journeys in our lives and that's okay to look different it's almost you know, something we welcome that we welcome that comfort it adds character to our exactly lives, right? <laughs> exactly awesome and uh, about how long will this flow last do you think just 30 minutes. It'll be a great 30 minute flow. And if you need just 15 minutes of the chunk, then you take 15 minutes, um, whatever amount you need. Um, and we'll be moving at a good pace. So if you do, if someone does fall behind, you can stay where you are. You can join whenever you need to and take breaks whenever you need to. Um, yeah. Wonderful. So it's not going to be like, oh, I missed the part. I can't do anymore. Right. Just right. Whatever you can do, do that. Right. Right. And I, when, when you do find your mind falling into that, I like to call that the ego, right? Because we are capable of doing everything here. We just need to accept maybe not today and, and a couple weeks from now when we continue to practice and warm up the body and stretch. Mm -hmm. And you just really, I think it is mentally, you're learning to accept yourself for what you are mm -hmm. and put yourself personally versus pushing yourself to achieve what other people are achieving, right? Right, right. Excellent. Okay, so let's get started then. Yeah. Let me see where my mat is on this. And as oh. an aside for everyone at home, I asked Christina to make sure to verbalize everything in case you do have a hearing disability. Also, we're going to try to create an audio only version of this after the fact so that you could play it without having to watch it and follow along at home as well. Yes, awesome. So we will get started in child's pose, which is a really common pose to get started in. So the knees will come out, if you don't have a mat, a little bit wider than your hips. The toes are going to come together. All right. And you're going to take a deep inhale in through the nose. And as you exhale, sink your hips back. Uh, so the tailbone may or may not touch the heels, and that is completely fine. And then start to extend your hands in front of you. And not so much so where we start to create tension in the shoulders, but long enough in front of us where we feel a lengthen down our sides. And then the forehead is going to come onto the mat. If we're feeling any pressure in our knees, bring them closer in together. And we'll just start to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. And continue through those deep inhales and deep exhales. That's going to help soften your mind, soften your body. And notice if we're holding any tension subconsciously, maybe in the back of your neck, in the forehead. Really allow yourself to surrender here. And we'll take three breaths together. Deep inhale in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Deep inhale in. Open mouth, exhale. Last one. Open mouth. 
And now we'll seal the lips. We're going to keep the breath inside of our body. So that means breathing in through the nose and out through your nose. And when we do so, we create a little bit of heat in the body, which starts to warm up the muscles. And see, maybe if you can push your tailbone a little bit closer towards your heels. Accepting the mind for where you are. Accepting the tensions we may be feeling. Breathing into either of those spaces. Take a deep breath in through your nose. As you exhale, start to walk your palms to the right side, just until you feel a stretch through the left side body. So that may mean pass onto the floor, past your mat, and keep the forehead down. You'll feel a stretch through the left side. And at any point you start to lose your breath, we may consider we're doing a little bit too much and take a few steps back. Take one more breath in through the nose, one more breath out through the nose, deep inhale and walk your palms back to the center. Take an exhale. Next breath in. As you exhale, we walk the palms to the left side. Again, until you reach that point till you feel a little stretch through the right side of your body, keep the forehead relaxed. Breathe in through the nose, out through your nose. One more breath in, one more exhale out. Next breath in, walk your palms back to the center, long in front of you, take an exhale. Next breath in, you're gonna root down through your hands and your knees, pick yourself up into a tabletop. When we're in our tabletop, shoulders align with the wrists and your hips are aligned with your knees. Can you check behind you? Your ankles are also aligned with your knees. And when we're here, we're actively pushing through the hands as well as the knees. And we'll take some cat cows to warm up the wrists and spine. On your inhale, drop your belly towards your mat. Lift your gaze up towards the sky. Spread your collarbones wide. Exhale, push the ground away, round your back, bring your chin into your chest, gaze between your thighs. Inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift the gaze, cow pose. Right, feel the spread through the heart. Exhale, round your spine, bring your chin in. And we'll take a few more moments here if you'd like to move on your own. I always love to offer that for the students. It allows you to find freedom and comfort with yourself. All right, so we exhale round. Inhale, we open. Exhale, round the spine, cat pose, gaze between the thighs, belly in. Inhale, lift the gaze. We'll take three more. Exhale, cow. Sorry, cat. <laughs> Inhale for cat. Last two rounds. Exhale. Inhale for cow. Last one. Exhale for cat. And your next inhale, come back into that neutral spine. So that means the belly is engaged. We're engaging hands and knees. You can gaze between your thumbs. On your next breath in, send your right arm towards the sky. Inhale, so send that right arm reaching up overhead. Gaze up towards your thumb and think about how you're trying to extend your hand up towards the sky to reach and grab something. At the same time, pushing away from that left hand. One more breath in. As you exhale, bring your right arm across your chest. Reach it underneath your left arm. 
Yeah, and you're gonna take yourself all the way down so you rest on your right shoulder. The left arm can extend in front of you. So walking it long so it starts to straighten. And breathing here into the shoulder, in through the nose, out through your nose. And you're consciously catching yourself every time your mind starts to drift. Right? And when we catch ourselves, that allows us to soften, to find our breath, to find calmness. Last two here. And taking your time, picking yourself up, bring the left hand closer to you. You can send the right arm back up towards the sky. Open up. Exhale back into that tabletop. All right. Now we'll take that to the left side. So root down through your right hand. Inhale, send the left arm high. Gaze up. Spread your collarbones wide. Open your chest. One more breath in. As you exhale, threading the needle. Right, that's what we call this posture, reaching the left arm across your chest, placing the left ear down gently, and start to walk your right hand long in front of you. Breathe. You should feel a nice stretch through the left arm. Maybe even also in the right. Each of our bodies are different. Remember that. Last two breaths here. And take your time, bring that right arm back close to you to push up through the right hand or push down through the right hand, send the left arm high. Exhale back into that tabletop. And when we're here, now we're gonna start to tuck our toes, take a deep breath in, lift your hips up towards the sky, coming into downward facing dog. And if this is too much, we can stay in our tabletop, right? Accepting where we need to be, where our body needs to be, right? And so let's pedal through our legs if we're in down dog. Bend into right knee, bend into left knee. And think about your hands. We often forget about them. You're engaging the pointer finger and thumb, pushing away from the ground, pressing your chest towards your thighs. And keep pedaling. Bend right knee, bend left knee. This kind of helps wake up the backs of our legs and come into stillness here. It's okay if your heels don't touch the ground. You can bend your knees to decompress the back. That's what I like to do, especially in the beginning or a slower flow. Active through the hands, gaze between your thighs and breathe. Shaking is good. We're shaking. Smile about it, right? We have some room to grow. It's exciting. Next breath. Look forward. Take your time. Baby steps all the way to the top of your mat or to meet your hands. Right? And once we're at the top or our feet have meet our hands, bring the feet so that they're aligned with your hips. Relax your head. The chest comes towards the thighs and sway side to side. This is gonna help, again, decompress the back, switching up the blood flow here. Again, something that's gonna bring calmness to the mind and body. You can shake the head, yes. Shake your head, no. Shoulder shrugs. But continue to breathe. It's the main focus here, our breath. And come into stillness here. Bring the feet back together so the toes are touching. It's okay again if the knees are bent. Relax the head. Yeah. Here we go. Inhale, lift your chest halfway. So that means bringing the chest aligned with your hips. Press the palms onto the shins or thighs. Exhale, forward fold. Relax the head. Surrender towards your legs. We'll take that two more times. Inhale, halfway lift, belly comes in, rib cages close, shoulders are back. 
exhale fold again you can keep the knees bent throughout this entire thing inhale halfway lift legs can be straighter bent exhale fold on your next inhale slowly slowly roll up feel each vertebra feel the power through the legs and we'll send the arms overhead Press them to top to touch at the top. Exhale, arms by your side. Inhale, swoop the arms overhead. Press your palms together and exhale, bring them to the middle of your heart and close your eyes. I like to always set an intention for practice. It helps guide you, right? Especially when the mind starts to jump back and forth. In today's practice, we're focusing on breathing, right? Something, the concept is something so simple, but it's really so hard. We're constantly battling our mind to stay focused. And when we can focus on our breath, it will calm you, especially when we step outside of our mat. We can harness our breath more easily, bringing peace to mind and body. So take a moment. If you have something else you would like to set, do so. And bring the eyes open. Inhale, send the arms overhead. As you exhale, press your palms together. Take one more breath in and lean towards the right side of the room. We're just shifting the left hip towards the left, reaching our palms to the right. Inhale, come back into your mountain pose. Exhale, let's lean to the left now. Lengthen through the right side of your body. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, we'll fold forward. Weight in your toes. Again, you can bend the knees if you need to. Inhale, halfway lift, right? We roll the shoulders, reach the head forward. Exhale, fold. We're going to plant our hands and let's step back into downward facing dog. So that's about a plank worth distance. And then the hips come up high. Inhale, send your right leg up into the air. Bend your right knee and circle out the right leg. And imagine there is a paintbrush between your right big toe and you're painting a huge canvas behind you. So taking those big circles. Keep both of your hands active. And switch the direction. And we're just getting some movement into our right hip, waking it up. Continue to breathe. And bring stillness into your right leg. Straighten it behind you. Lift through your glutes. Active through your hands. One more breath in. As you exhale, shift your weight forward into your hands. Bring your foot between your hands. Yeah, plant it down. Yeah, even if that means scooching it up, right? Drop down to your left knee. Inhale, arms come overhead. This is a low lunge position. If we have some pressure in our knee, I always suggest using a blanket. Right, we don't need to be any more uncomfortable, right? Arms come overhead, hold here for a beat. Extend through the fingertips, press through the top of your left foot, belly in. Soften. Take one more sip of air in. As you exhale, half splits. Your hands are going to come down straight in your right leg. Chelsea, I heard you earlier saying how you had some tight hips. This is going to be good for that, especially for runners, really everything. <laughs> I like to use a block here. The right leg is straight. And you're going to fold. Maybe the head comes down. If you want to use a block, you don't have to fold all the way. And imagine you're trying to bring your heart over your right toes. So extend the crown of the head. Even looking forward may help. Two more breaths. 
if we feel pressure in our right knee, bend your right knee a little bit. One more breath in, take an exhale. Next breath in, bend into your right knee. Plant your left hand on the inside of your right foot. Send the right arm towards the sky. Taking a twist here. Pivot your chest back as if you're trying to reach your right hand behind you. Gaze up towards your right thumb. Relax your jaw. One more breath in. Take an exhale. Your next inhale, plant your right hand down. Tuck your left toes. We're going to go back into downward facing dog. Even if that means dragging your right foot back, it meets the left. Stay here for three breaths. Now we'll send the left leg up towards the sky. Inhale, kick it up. Grab your paintbrush between your left big toe and circle it up. Feeling any popping. Move through toes and ankle. Different direction. And straighten your left leg, kick it up high, engage both of your glutes, active through your hands. One more breath in. As you exhale, slowly place the left foot between your hands. Even if you have to use your other hand to help it, drop down to your right knee, low lunge, arms swoop up overhead. Gaze up towards your thumb, that's going to help open up the neck. If that's too much, look forward. Space between the ribs is closed. One more breath in. Half split as you exhale, straighten your left leg. Do the same thing you did on the other side. Right? So looking forward, dropping the heart over the left toes. And maybe this side is a little bit more tight for me, especially the left side is the side I struggle on. So it looks a lot tighter and it feels a lot tighter. And that's okay. I just take the modifications. I bend my left knee. I use my hands to lift the heart. Last two. Next breath in through your nose. Start to bend into the left knee. Plant your right hand on the inside of your left foot. Inhale, open up through the left arm. It's a nice pivot through the chest, spreading your collarbones. Gaze up or down. Breathe. And thoughts will arise. And every time you do, you catch yourself. Come back into the present moment. One more sip of air. As you exhale, left hand comes down. Tuck your right toes. Pick up your right knee. Send your left leg back behind you. Downward facing dog. Let's take a cleansing breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more time. And seal the lips. Hold down dog for two more breaths.
And we're going to go through that just one more time. The body loves repetition. When you do the repetition, the mind starts to recognize we're in a safe space. It surrenders into the postures. It surrenders to your breath. Next, inhale, look forward. Baby steps all the way to meet your hands. Tip, tip, toe. All right, the feet will come together. Inhale, lift your chest halfway. Exhale, fold. Roll all the way up, mountain pose. Arms swoop overhead, press them together. Exhale, arms by your side. Engage your feet. Inhale, arms overhead. As you exhale, lean to the right. Bump your left hip to the right side of, or sorry, the left side of the room. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, lean towards the left side of the room. Extend those hands. Lift up and away from your hips. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, fold forward, weight in your toes. Inhale, lift your hips half forward, lift your hips, lift your chest halfway. As we exhale, we plant our hands, step back into a high plank distance, lift your hips, downward facing dog. You're doing great. Send your right leg up into the air. As you exhale, gently bring your right foot between your hands. Awesome. Drop down to the left knee. Low lunge, arms overhead. And keep pressing through the top of your left foot as well as grounding down through the right. One more breath in. Half splits as we exhale. Straighten your right leg. I like to point the toes towards my face so that it stretches the backs of my legs. Accepting where we are. Bend back into your right knee. Plant your left hand down. Inhale, send the right arm towards the sky. One more breath. As we exhale, plant the right hand down. Tuck your left toes. Send your right leg to meet the left foot. And tailbone high, downward facing dog. Left leg comes up, inhale. As we exhale, we gently place it between our hands. Right knee comes down, be soft. Arms overhead. And gaze up. On the next exhale, half split, straighten your left leg. Bend the knee, or maybe you're in a space where the left leg can be completely straight. Left knee will start to bend once more. Plant your right hand down. Inhale, send the left arm high. Each time we're opening up our chest a little bit further. Keep the chin away from your chest. The neck is still long. As we exhale, plant your left hand down, tuck your right toes, kick the left leg back to meet the right foot. Downward facing dog. On your next inhale, look forward, drop down to your knees and swing your legs off to the side, take a seat. 
all facing you guys. So we're gonna draw the bottoms of our feet together. The knees are gonna open and you may look like this, right? My hips are always so tight. Um, just part of the journey for me. I'm gonna sit on a block. All right, so the feet are together. You can do diamond or butterfly. Diamond, the feet are farther in front. Butterfly, the heels are really close to the groin. All right, so grab the feet with your hands. Inhale, open the heart, gaze up. Exhale, fold heart over the toes. You don't have to go too deep. Right? Keep pressing the knees, bring the gaze down to the ground and breathe. And slightly bend the elbows a little bit out so we can feel the chest working its way towards the ground. Breathing to groin, breathe into the inner thighs. Maybe it's more mental for you here, so breathe into your mind. Hold a little bit deeper, last five breaths. It's comforting when we give ourselves a number because we know that discomfort is temporary. It's only gonna be here for a short period of time. It's our choice and commitment to stay focused on the breath, stay present in the moment. Allow yourself to decompress and surrender. Next, inhale, lift the chest, take an exhale. Bring your palms behind you, work the feet so that the feet are planted, fingertips facing forward, All right, and just window wipe the legs side to side. This will help get into the lower back if we felt that. Helps realign the hips. Then extend your legs in front of you. If we have a tight back, take your hip, your knees and legs out wider, aligned with the hips. If things are okay, you can bring the feet together and just bend the knees or straight legs wherever you are. Inhale, arms overhead. I'm gonna bend my knees, exhale, fold, heart reaching over the toes. I know it's a strange concept, but just imagine we're pulling our heart over our toes. You can grab the feet, you can grab your shins, you can grab your thighs and relax the head. Stay with the breath. It's something that is always with you. Even when we forget about it, it is always there for you. Inhale, slowly lift the chest. Take an exhale. One more breath in, and we're going to lower onto our backs. Lower all the way. If we feel tension in our back, you can lay on your blanket, place it by the tailbone. And once we're on our back, bring your knees into your chest, rock side to side, giving your back a little massage here. You can circle the knees one direction clockwise, and then you can circle the knees counterclockwise.
And come into stillness, meeting in the center here. Open your arms up like a T. Kick the heels so that we're making a 90 degree bend with our knees. One breath in. As we exhale, drop your knees to the right. right keep that 90 degree bend there. Sometimes the heels like to come in and we'll gaze to the left. If gazing to the left is difficult and causes too much discomfort, gaze up. And breathe here in this gentle twist. When we take twists in our practice, we're releasing some of that junky stuff that gets caught up in our organs. And when we release those toxins, we're creating space for more positivity, for more comfort in the mind and body. Inhale, lift your knees back to center. Keep that 90 degrees. Take an exhale. One breath in. Drop the knees to the left. Gaze to the right. And check your knees. They're still making that 90 degree bend. And focus on getting that right shoulder to the mat. And surrender the groin. Surrender wherever you feel tension. It can end up being more subconscious than actually the fact that we're carrying tension there. We have to tell ourselves we're safe. One more exhale here. And next breath, lift your knees up and hug them into your chest, rock side to side. And we're gonna come into our final posture. And that's gonna be an inversion, right? And don't let that word scare you. Shoulder stand is what we're gonna do. So step one, release your arms by your side and you're gonna straighten your legs up towards the sky. This can be enough for some of us, so stay here. Moving further, Keep the knees into the chest. Roll the weight into your shoulders. Place your palms onto the lower part of your back. Yeah, and work your elbows in to really protect yourself. And then straighten the legs up towards the sky. Yeah, so the heels will align with your hips and work those elbows in. So you may need to fidget here for a moment to get that good support. The weight should be in your shoulders, not your neck. If you feel it in your neck, you've shifted the weight too far, then so take just a few steps back. Keep the legs active so the toes are pointing up towards the sky. This is really great for our thyroid. This is really great for shifting the circulation, right? Constantly, we're working to send blood all the way down to our toes, right? This kind of brings in new blood flow, brings in new energy. Breathe. One more breath in. As we exhale, slowly lower your back onto the ground. Extend your legs in front of you. So I lied, one more stretch. So we counter stretch shoulder stand with fish pose. 
So imagine you're wanting to look up, look at someone in front of you. So lift yourself up on your forearms. Right, yeah. So once we're on our forearms, take them so that they're slightly underneath your hips. So right hand will come slightly underneath right hip. Left hand will come underneath left hip. And work those elbows in. Roll the shoulders back. Pull the heart up towards the sky. Point your toes forward. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, drop your head back. Keep lifting your heart up towards the sky. Do not collapse into your shoulders. Two more breaths. If we have a lot of discomfort, just look forward, right? But this is going to be great to open up the neck. Or if we spend a lot of time looking at our phones, it's a nice counter stretch. Last breath. And exhale. Pick the head up first and then lower back onto the mat. Awesome. We made it to the end. So bring your knees into your chest. This may be the biggest hug of your week or maybe the first hug you've given yourself. Wrap your arms around your shins. Deep inhaling, squeeze everything, squeeze, bring the forehead into your chest. Knees are touching your forehead. One more breath in. Exhale, release arms, release legs, and surrender into the ground. You work the shoulders underneath you. You allow your feet to fall towards the right side and left side. And swallow that tiny bit of spit sitting in the back of your throat. That's going to help relax your jaw. Close the eyes. And start to focus on the belly rising and falling. For many students, this is the hardest part of class because we're always wanting to move, always wanting to be somewhere else. Tell yourself you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And breathe in the lightness. Meditate on that breath. Take a breath in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Gently start to bring movement back into your body. So wiggle your toes. Bring motion back into your fingertips. Start to roll out your wrists taking circles, roll out your ankles, counterclockwise, clockwise, on your next breath, send the arms overhead, point through your toes, interlace your hands, as if you were just waking up this beautiful Sunday morning. And as we exhale, bring your knees back into your chest. Rock side to side. And we'll fall onto the right hand side. 
fall over fetal position. Your head can rest on your bicep. And we take fetal position to acknowledge our new beginning. It's the rebirth of ourselves, right? We're not the same person that stepped onto a mat. We may not feel it and that takes time, but be patient and kind and know those feelings are to come. And using your left hand, push yourself up into a comfortable seat. That can mean crisscross, sitting on your heels. I like to finish class with one good cleansing breath. And that today is going to be lion's breath, which can be kind of funny, but luckily no one's looking at you. So lion's breath is dropping the jaw open and sticking your tongue out on the exhale. And maybe you're wondering why. And the big why is to relax all our facial muscles. When we practice yoga, sometimes we squish our face, we bring pressure into our forehead. This is going to help relax that. So take a deep inhale in. Lion's breath. Just to make sure, let's do two more. And bowing your heads in gratitude. Namaste. Thank you guys. Great job. I feel like that was 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a little bit longer, but I think a lot of it is you are showing us initially how to do things. Yeah. So what you can do is, uh, like, the first time through, because we went through the flow twice, right? Like yes. Like, the, the middle part. So in the future, once someone knows how to do it, they can actually cut to that second flow and repeat that one, and it'll be a lot faster once you know what you're doing and you've opened right. it. Yeah, and I think it's also important to like make sure, I always worry doing these online classes that I want people to know what we're feeling, where our body should be, and because there's a lot of cases where people do yoga and end up in injury more so than benefiting. Right. Um, and so that's why maybe it took a little bit longer. I just worry for all of us out there, our newer yogis, um, just uh, to get that extra care. Oh, I absolutely agree, and I think it is nice to know that we can – reference back to this and know exactly well now I lost my face <laughs> and know what we should be feeling how we should be breathing and be able to reference that if we're gonna start doing this daily I also think oh Paula thank you so much I'm so glad you enjoyed it sorry we missed <laughs> everyone else's comments but we were very mentally there and yeah. one thing that I noticed that you said at the very end really kind of hit me and you said it's the breathing part is hard because you have to stay still and we don't want to stay still. Mm -hmm. And I think that's even more true now with everyone having cabin fever. You're just like, I got to go. I got to move. <laughs> I got to get out of here. And you yeah. don't so much want to be alone with yourself or alone with your mm -hmm. thoughts or even mm -hmm. in your body at this point. But yeah. I can say after doing that whole flow, I feel better and clearer and even when we went into butterfly or what's the one that's more in front diamond diamond yeah um i noticed my hips were looser than they were when we started for sure right that and that's great because a lot of people carry tension in their hips um i personally do and so i always try to target that area and and i about bringing back to like people not wanting to be still and it's funny because with quarantine we feel that we have to be still but so many people still haven't had that experience of just being within themselves and accepting where we are and acknowledging our feelings. So I find Shavasana to be really important. And I'm glad that like that came to you. In the yes, class. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me, Christina. Um, do you have anything else that you feel like you haven't gotten to say that you'd like to say? Um, if anyone is looking for more classes or if they found that, you know, they really vibed with me, I offer virtual classes on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and as well as um, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. I will say we do move a little bit faster, but the classes go Tuesdays, 
the easiest Thursday we pick up the pace and then Saturday we get a nice good sweat in. So if anyone's looking for more classes, I know there's so much online, but I'm also hosting some free classes throughout the week. And now is that going to be on your Instagram live or? Yes, it'll be through Instagram live. Um, and I usually start like five minutes in so people have time to sign in and kind of get their camera set up. Oh, wonderful. And then yeah. uh, your Instagram handle is in my stories right now. Yes. And it's uh, just at Christina underscore S-A-E-E-D, Christina yes. Saeed, with mm -hmm. the underscore in between. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm outside. I think Christina is, where are you, in your bedroom? <laughs> I'm in my spare bedroom, <laughs> my yeah, new yoga actually, studio. <laughs> it, it looks like a yoga studio to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, now I'm Thank you guys for joining us all the way in New York. Thank Paula, you. I don't know where you are. Everyone else who joined us and uh, did the flow and everyone who's going to be doing the flow when they have time, thank you for joining us. Hopefully we were helpful to yeah. you. Christina, thank you for joining us. Yeah, it was good to see class. you. Tell your family I say hello, giving hugs I, for everyone. <laughs> I will, and hugs to you and your family, and uh, we'll talk later. Yes, yeah, sounds Bye. good. Bye.